Hi everyone, it's Miss Amy from the Ridgewood Public Library. Thanks for joining me for story time today. Today we are going to read some books about cats and cakes, two things I am very fond of. So the first one is called Marigold Bakes a Cake. Marigold liked everything just so. His fur was always well-groomed and his calendar was sorted well in advance. Mondays were Marigold's favorites. Because Mondays were for baking and Marigold loved to bake alone. No distractions, no exceptions. Like he has a sign on his door that says, no visitors, it's Monday. This particular Monday, Marigold wanted to bake a cake that was absolutely fur-sheddingly fabulous. He had plenty of ideas, but it had to be perfect. With his snazziest recipes sorted, snipped, and clipped for their most exquisite bits, Marigold was ready to begin. Look, he wrote himself a note here. It says, remember, make the best cake ever. First, he separated three egg whites and whipped them up in a large mixing bowl. Easy. Next, he added a cup of milk. Peasy. Followed by the juice of a lemon. Squeezy. Then, Marigold sprinkled in just a pinch of... Finch? Hmm, that's not right, said Marigold. See the little bird on his table? It's a finch. Shoo, Mr. Finch, Marigold said. I've no time to chase you today. It's Monday after all, and Mondays are for baking. Marigold politely showed Mr. Finch to the door. He then returned to his recipe, only slightly flustered. He shaved chocolate ribbons with the utmost care and drizzled the batter with three swirling spoonfuls of rich molasses before tossing in just a smidgen of pigeons? Uh-oh, more birds. That definitely isn't right, said Marigold. How do you think he's feeling here? A little annoyed with these birds? Marigold's tail went all poofy. A brief chase was in order. Skedaddle! There's no room in my Monday for pesky pigeons. Marigold returned to his masterpiece, a bit more frazzled than before. Crafting buttercream pillars and fondant flowers had a calming effect. He began to hum a little tune before mixing in three tablespoons of loons. Oh no, even more birds. Loons, no! <laughs> With ears pinned back and eyes wide, Marigold leaped about the kitchen in full-on feline frenzy. Meow! He looks very frustrated, doesn't he? However, his tantrum only made his guests giggle and left his cake rather less than perfect. Marigold was full of fuss. Perhaps a walk would brighten his spirits. Poor Marigold. Baking is for the birds, he grumbled as he shut the door. What's happening there? Looks like these birds are gonna try to bake, right? Boy, was he wrong about that. <laughs> What a mess. The baking wasn't at all for the birds, but at least they tried. And Marigold recognized a love of cake making when he saw it. So he thought that if baking wasn't for the birds, then maybe he could teach them. It's a nice idea. He was wrong about that too. <laughs> The end, that's pretty silly. I hope he got to make his cake eventually. All right, our next book is a Pete the Cat book. It's called The Missing Cupcakes. Pete and Gus were as busy as could be. 
They were getting ready for the cupcake party. It started at three. They were making cupcakes for everyone. Pete and Gus counted them just for fun. They had 10 when they were done. Should we double check? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yep, 10 cupcakes. Oh no, hang on, some of the cupcakes were gone. They were sure there had been 10. Pete said, maybe we need to count again. Should we help him? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh-oh. They counted the cupcakes lined up straight. Now there were only eight. It looked like someone had taken two. But who? Pete and Gus did not know what to do. What would you do? Just then, they found a clue. Gus said, look what I have found, sprinkles on the ground. I bet it was Squirrel, she loves sprinkles. Squirrel said, it wasn't me, it couldn't be. I've been at the spelling bee. Uh-oh, more cupcakes are missing, come and see. How many are there now, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh-oh, we're down to six. This was too weird. Two more cupcakes had disappeared. Now there were only six. Someone must be playing tricks. But who? Pete and Gus did not know what to do. Just then, they found another clue. What is it? Do you see some footprints? Hmm. Pete said, I bet it was alligator. He loves to eat. Alligator said, it wasn't me. It couldn't be. I've been learning my ABCs. Uh-oh, more cupcakes are missing. Come and see. Oh no, how many are left now? One, two, three, four. Now there were only four. Someone had taken two more. But who? Pete and Gus did not know what to do. Just then they found another clue. I bet it was Turtle, said Pete. I know Turtle loves sweets. Oh, here's the clue, right? A ladder on the outside of the window there to get to the cupcakes. Turtle said, it wasn't me, it couldn't be. I've been swimming in the sea. <gasps> Look, do you see what I see? Someone's taking more cupcakes. Uh-oh, more cupcakes are missing. Come and see. What on earth was going on? All the cupcakes were now gone. Oh no. Pete and Gus did not know what to do. They started looking for another clue. What do you see? There's a trail of footprints and sprinkles and cupcake wrappers going that way. They found Grumpy Toad with icing on his face. Pete and Gus had solved the case. Mm -hmm. It was Grumpy Toad. I am so sorry, it was me. I could not stop with just one. I ate and ate till there were none. Has that ever happened to you? You were eating something so delicious you couldn't stop eating it? Everyone agreed Grumpy Toad would have to miss the fun. He could not come after what he had done. Pete said, but wait, Grumpy Toad made a mistake. This is true. Let's give him a second chance. That's what friends do. Pete told Grumpy Toad they would give him another chance. He was so excited, he did a happy dance. I like his dance. That, the night of the party was so much fun. Grumpy Toad brought more than enough cupcakes for everyone. Let's count how many Grumpy Toad brought, okay? Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Wow. 
That's more than the 10 that Pete had made, right? So it all worked out. Pete the Cat's Cupcake Party. They look pretty happy. And that's the end of our story. I hope you enjoyed story time today, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.